is the first master class. Everyone on the panel has a master level somewhere in the flame path with Rose, Smith, and Lion. Weirdest one to be in flame path. So we're going to open up if you guys have any questions. If not, we have questions pre prepared. And if you think of anything, go ahead and raise your hand and ask a question. That's what this is for. It's basically showing how they got there, what they did, what they you know, would be looking for if they were a monarch attending those awards out. So if we want to get started, do you want to have a question? Yourself? Well, we're going to do introductions first. If we're not going to do introductions. We don't like those people. <laughs> <laughs> they were. Oh, okay. I say. <laughs> Proceed. So, let's go right to left. I'm Siege with Critias. I'm in the Rusty Gauntlet. Oh, I started in 2006. I got my masterhood in 2020. Yeah, right around there. All right. Um, my name is Whiskey Sama. Um, I started in 2008 at River's End. I currently attend Ironhold, and I got my master rose actually this May of 2023. I am Kimbra Griffin Hart. I'm from Lindsaydale. I started in 2017 and I got my Master Hood in the Rose Path in just this last winter's um, end rain. I am Edward Budd. Uh, I've been playing since 2002. I got my uh, Master Rose here at Last Salt Wars here this year, 2023. I am Cantor. I started back in 2002. I've been in both Rivers End and more recently Iron Hold. And I got my Master Rose three years ago? Something like that? It was more than three years ago, but okay. <laughs> I don't do time well. <laughs> was it pre COVID? Yeah. <laughs> Those are the before times. Okay, hey, does anyone have questions? All right, well, let me go ahead. I've got a good warm up question. So, uh, with all of you guys being part of the Flame Path, what inspired you to be a part of the Flame? You want to start? Sure. For for me, it's I just enjoy giving ever, uh, other people the chance to have fun. So I like picking up the slack and doing the things that allow give more people time to battle game and do the things that they enjoy to do, which gives me joy. So that's why I do those things. For me, um, I just really saw things that people could get help with, like getting stuff out of their car, things like that. And I've always liked to help other people with those things because I know. When I'm overwhelmed, I want someone to help me out, so I try to return that favor. And when I saw that there were certain responsibilities that needed to be filled, I went for it because I wanted to be part of that helpful circle. So, yeah. um, For me, me and um, Leo Herthseer um, started Whimsydale. It was basically him himself alone for like six months. He would show up to the park every week and then I saw him playing like the boffer part at a uh, winter fair one year and that basically started the whole of Whimsydale. So we started from the ground up and seeing that, um, just what all has to go into it to run a whole park and knowing how much help everybody always needs, especially when there aren't very many people, um, it was just something really easy for me to see where the needs were without being asked and I always enjoy helping people lessening their burden so um, just being there whenever I could. Uh, for me I was uh, I ran in office as champion and realized I needed a lot of help so after I got out of office I wanted to run and uh, help people uh, with any office trying to uh, you know, grab gear, bring stuff, you know, bring water, whatever it was, and it was start off with little things, just make sure that the person in office wasn't overwhelmed. Uh, on my end, it was, when I first started, I saw, like, what made events fun for me, and I know not a lot of people can afford that kind of stuff, so I would just end up volunteering anything that I had or bringing it with me and letting them know that, hey, this, this is available if you need anything to help with, I, I have it. Or if you just need me help and I had time, I was there. If I did it, might as well. Someone else got to do it anyway. That's about it. What did you do to earn your masterhood? What was the project or event that you accomplished? Awesome. Yeah, for me it was a combination of things. I ran a, a big fundraiser um, out of the Rusty Gauntlet that, that helped pay some AI dues and also running Feast at Salt War for a couple of years. 
Um, for me, a I believe it was kind of like autocrating and helping like run Salt Wars, um, my consistent service with taking photos, editing and posting them. I take around 100,000 photos a year that I go through and I try to focus on that being like the fun and highlight parts of Amherst and I think that helped earn myself towards that flame. Here, Rose. Um, I think mine's just been overall consistent service. Mm -hmm. um, Several of my upper awards were given consecutively. I guess somebody close to me wrote a really long thought out letter to one of the monarchs and I had some serious imposter syndrome with that because I didn't know specifically like what I had done or what I felt like I had earned those for. So I asked to have my masterhood put on hold to be awarded so I could try and earn it. So I volunteered at GATE for Salt Wars a couple years in a row. I volunteered on the event committee. I volunteered for Food Fight. So I did a lot of things to try and feel like I'd earned those upper awards within myself. And then I just, in talking to, again, people around me, felt like, okay, I feel like I'm starting to have earned those. And then the people around me were like, you consistently are doing all these things. We don't understand why you feel that way, but we understand. And then when I said I felt like I'd earned it, they decided to award it to me because people around me feel like I'd earned it, but I hadn't. So that's when I got it. I, uh, I got a lot of uh, my upper level awards for just consistently being helpful. You know, helping out at park level, uh, kingdom level, uh, volunteering time and uh, locations, simple as that. You also did rules rep. Honestly, oh, yeah, I really rules. can't tell you why I got it. It just kind of happened after so many years, I guess. Candler was the ninja in the group. Yeah. <laughs> he, whenever you're needing help or getting stressed out, he's right there behind you to help out with things. He's been very consistent on that. He is a very good example of flame for that. Because when you need someone to rely on, he's there. With several large events, yeah. he was in the background just doing stuff without anybody noticing. It's okay, we got you. <laughs> um, we'll someone knows yeah. that I know. <laughs> <laughs> you have another question? You're good. So, obviously, the flame path has to do with a lot of volunteering. and you guys sound like you've been all over the place. Do you guys have a particular favorite thing you volunteered for that was like big and memorable for you? Uh, for me, it's Definitely always uh, volunteering for the kitchen. I enjoy being in there. And not a lot of people do enjoy cooking for a lot of people. So that's something that I can take off of everybody's plate and have fun while I'm doing it. So it's definitely the kitchen for me. Honestly, be my most recent achievement with Salt Wars. <laughs> it was the most fun for me. Very challenging, but I really enjoy seeing people like having that first experience at an event and everything. It, I like to have them feel welcome the way I felt welcome my first day at park. And it went so smooth. <laughs> you had so much out ahead of time that it just went smoothly. It was great. Coffee. Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed, when I was still able to do it, doing craft nights every week for people at my park for several years um, and cooking for them. It was really really great for us to bond together as a group and to grow together as a group. Um, we were all really close. We all learned a lot. Um, we would bring lots of crafting items. Um, I had most of the craft items for everybody, but like Lucas would come and teach people, but to have a space to be able to do that and just improve was some of my favorite mo uh, moments is being on the rose path and serving those in my community and just again seeing those needs and helping people because it's hard to ask for help a lot of the times um, so being aware that it's hard to ask for help knowing where you can help it just makes me happy to be able to do that and step in without being asked there was an uh, event in Rising Winds called Bridge Wars, and uh, one of my friends out there that wasn't a friend at the time but have since become friends was working in the kitchen, and uh, I just decided that they needed help and just went in and started doing dishes for them uh, and would just 
clean around their area in the kitchen area because uh, they just seemed a little overwhelmed and I, I wanted to be helpful. So I, just, I didn't say anything, I just, I just went around and helped, helped out and everything. Uh, just ninja clean everything around them, uh, just trying to make their life a little bit easier. I suppose my, like my favorite times were the, actually two of them kind of tied. Uh, our Diablo thing we did at Dragon, Dragon Blade, Blade Wars. Wars. Yep. I think it was the second one. We ended up, uh, me and Jester having had to basically kind of run it because Cody had prior commitments. Mm -hmm. And then the Days of Adventure, the second time I believe is the one that we ended up having to write, I think over like 250 quests just at random. And those seemed to be the most fun for me just because it, it, I could see that everybody else was enjoying what happened. Yeah. Do you feel like someone can earn a master's plan without certain managing the level? I think that's a difficult answer because at the core of things, you don't have a kingdom without a park, mm -hmm. but you do in a way for us, like how we've earned our things, we're mostly kingdom level. It has to affect the community at whole or at large. You need to be able to make waves within your kingdom and change it and keep raising that standard for everyone, in my opinion at least. I'm not sure how you feel. Yeah, I feel like, I, I mean, I can agree. Um, I think it would have to come necessarily not at a kingdom event, but to affect the kingdom in, a, in some way. Yeah. For sure. I think you wouldn't necessarily have to, like, be on the event committee or run kitchen or yeah. do something that puts you in the limelight. It might take longer, but you would still have to do things to help out at kingdom level in a sense, like at Salt Wars staying to if someone loses their keys and has to split all their gear up and stay Did until someone I don't know who does that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, until someone else's ride can make it from Utah <laughs> over to Rangeley back to yeah. Utah. Like there are things you can do again without putting yourself in the limelight or being in these big positions yeah. that even can offering your home affect, for a vigil. Yeah. That yeah. can help you get there. But without affecting yeah. over time it would be difficult. It's, it's easier for people to see what's visible. Yeah. I, but that's not always what service is about. Right. So I would say, yes, you can. But in a way, you, even if you're just affecting your park, if you affect your park enough, it does spread to other parks in the kingdom yeah. because they'll hear about it or see it. And then that philosophy or whatever happening, it will spread to another park that's closer by that sees it. And then mm -hmm. it'll spread more and more and more. And it eventually, as long as people are paying attention, will trace back to the initial park. Mm -hmm. He worded it better than me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, that, that's perfect. Yeah, you have a question? Excuse me, this is already asked, but yeah, um, how do you help without stepping on people's toes? Because that's where I get into, it's like, I could do this, but it's also in your domain, so do I touch it? <laughs> I don't know if I can answer that one. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think you are the perfect example of that, yeah. because instead of just jumping in and doing it, you ask, yeah. you ask and ask and ask, hey, you seem a little stressed. Can I help by doing this? And you give specific examples of what you're willing to help with, not just That's where really can good. I help, which when you're in it, especially people who are like neurodivergent, you don't know how to delegate because you don't know what you need to do. You don't know what other people's abilities are going to do. You have a hard time letting people help, letting go of some of that control. You, TRC, very much give those examples of this is what I'm willing to help with. You have proven that you can execute those to an exacting degree. And if someone says, no, I'd rather do that, you give an other option. Yeah. Like, hey, can I help you uh, bring in those sign-ins or something? Or, hey, can I help you unload your car? Yes. It's great ways to ask. Yep. I think asking is mm -hmm. a big way to not step on toes while still helping. Yeah. I would say it depends on the extreme amount, like if it's just a small thing, like oh there's a there's a plastic bottle on the ground right there, just pick it up. Yeah. Not, you don't have to ask the trash crat. Yeah. Guaranteed, you don't have to ask a trash cat to pick up crap. <laughs> you just see Edward a pop up behind a trash can. <laughs> With a trash what are you can doing? <laughs> more like gate crat, like someone running the battle games or crat or the autocrat, if it's something with them, 
you can, uh, depending on how you personally are, if you feel like you can reach out to them and ask, that's great. If you still don't feel that way, just make yourself available and they'll usually ask for help from someone. Yeah. Yeah. It may not be like as big of a role as you may think you can take on, but any little bit will help. Yes. Showing your availability is what's important. I had uh, a member of uh, our kingdom come up to me at the end of Salt Wars and ask, hey, can I help you in any way with Trash or Cat on Sunday? And uh, we talked about it and he gave options of ways he was willing to help. And uh, he ended up staying after and doing a sweep of the entire uh, so, campground. Yeah. and helping out that way, just sweeping for trash. You have a question, Rocky? With most of the flame path being work behind the scenes, how do you guys stay motivated when you're not getting recognized? Brag to your friends. <laughs> Brag to your friends. I don't do it for recognition. I do it because I want people to have fun, and that makes me have fun in turn. Yeah, yeah that's, that's something thing. I had to learn, because sometimes you get burnt out, and a way that I had to find uh, to do things is like, what am I actually playing in Amper? Why am I playing? Why am I here? What makes it fun for me? And I had to re-come up with ideas that made it healthy for me to really enjoy the game again. Like when I was running for events and I'm like, well, I'm a little stressed from that right now. I don't really want to do that. But I found other things to do. Like I love photography and I love doing that. So I found another way to serve while also fulfilling my enjoyment with the game. So there's just ways to get creative about it. So. Yeah, it's easy to get sucked into the uh, recognition loop and get burnt out for not being recognized but as long as you're doing the things that you enjoy mm -hmm. that burnout's not going to come as as quickly or as hard yeah. and it's a lot easier to deal with so honestly that's that's it do what you enjoy have fun the things will come when they come awards are kind of just like an after after extra present uh -huh. on top of it <laughs> yeah. bring people with you yeah would be something i would say because it can help if you bring people around you and help show them that they can help too, even just in little ways, and it makes such a big difference. That frees everyone up to be able to enjoy what they love about the game mm -hmm. even more. For sure. I wouldn't have been able to run Salt Wars as well if I didn't have the support group I had. Like, the Kratz and everyone that were there were amazing, and I'm really glad they were there to help me because they wouldn't have ran, and I would have been way burnt out. So it was great. You always have a support group, like Kimber said. It's a good idea. Your friends always want to hear what you're doing and mm -hmm. the cool things you're doing. Uh, so ride your friends because they will always want to want to listen and support you. Oh yeah. So hype group, hype group, <laughs> hype group. Yeah. You have another question? Yeah. No, you keep asking. This we is love wonderful. questions. <laughs> have you ever actually felt qualified to volunteer for things? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, some extra. <laughs> Sometimes, after being pushed into those situations where you gain that experience, and then you get people who can hype you up. Oh yeah. And beat off that imposter syndrome. There's definitely days you don't feel qualified, and that's why you have to ask and have a lot of people be like, hey, you've done this before, what did you do? Asking more people, the better. It mm -hmm. makes it so much better for you when you're doing that stuff. Like, I wanna do it this way, how would you perceive this? It's a really good way to have a counsel for that and everything, like, this is an idea I have, how do you think this could be executed? And you can brainstorm with people to make sure, like, even if you don't quite know what you're doing, you can feel confident and that'll give other people reassurance in what you're doing. And I found that's a great way to get people to feel like they're involved yeah. too. Get everyone to feel like they have... It helps get their feet wet. Well, get yeah. their feet wet yeah. and to feel like they have given something mm -hmm. to the game themselves without having to be fully in it, kind yeah. of. Yeah. I go with no. <laughs> Just because you shouldn't let that stop you from volunteering because yeah. you can right. always learn before or at the time what you need to know and then ask if they've been saying if there's something that comes up at the time that you're not sure how to handle. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Yeah, definitely don't be afraid to uh, step up and just just do. If uh, you're, you're not going to learn any other way. There's tons of people there that will support you and, and help you along that way if, if you let them and you can definitely learn and be qualified to do it better in the future. And if nobody else steps up to do it, having somebody do it is better than not having anyone do it at all. Mm -hmm. Even if it's bad. 
as the wise Shia LaBeouf. You, you, you learn better. Right. You, you learn from your mistakes. Yeah. 100%. Hopefully. Or like, yeah, yeah. right. Like the wise Shia LaBeouf once said, just do it. So. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yes, Rocky? With being the people that are known for as much volunteer work and being the people that ask for help, what, how do you guys compartmentalize say no? And how would you recommend people on the flame path? I'm not quite sure I follow. How do you say no? the easiest way to say no? How do you set your boundaries? Asking you to do something that you don't want to do. Oh, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. It's not hard for me to just say no. I don't know. Like, for me, I just... I tell them, like, are you asking if they're ask, asking me for help and I don't need the help? Is that what you're saying? If they ask you to do something and you're not well, necessarily wanting to do that service. Oh, wanting to like do the service. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah, like somebody came up and said, I always, hey, you run kitchen, run it again. <laughs> right, right. Do you want to or not? How did you want to word it, Chaco? Or? I was going to say, like, how would you guys approach saying no to somebody? Yeah. Like, what was, what are some thoughts in there? Yeah, there's a lot of different ways. Like this last salt war, um, I was told by many people that I was on probation from helping, so um, <laughs> I use that as my out, right? Mm -hmm. um, that was one way. But mm -hmm. for me also, I told them, you know, it was it was good for me to step back and let some other people have a chance to step up and do the things that they wanted to do. So I politely declined mm -hmm. um, because there was people filling those positions already. So, you know, in that sense, it was easy. If there's um, a need and nobody else is doing it, I'm probably not going to say no, regardless. So there's that. Um, I have a hard time saying no, as you guys know. <laughs> but um, a way that I like to do it is a creative approach. But like, oh, like, as much as I'd like to do that, either I'm really busy right now and I appreciate you asking me, however, have you asked these people as well? These are other people that I found that are interested in this, that also are doing these things. So I try to keep those people that have helped me in the past in mind. So like if I'm not in particular able to do those things or want to do those things, I'm like, I might not be able to do it for you right now, but I know these people that are also interested. And that's the way that I uh, politely decline as I divert attention to other people that volunteer. I've always tried to do the same redirect. You know, mm -hmm. hey, these people over here would do it. And I'm, I'll, I also add on, I, I'm more than happy to consult. I'll just refer them to people that have asked me specifically about the flame path because mm -hmm. I know that they're trying to find something that they can do to be recognized for it and rather than ask me who's already been recognized enough for it, I can help. I just don't want my name anywhere attached to it kind of thing. Ninja. Ninja. <laughs> That's great. Do you have a question, Chaco? It's actually interesting that you guys bring that up a lot because I have noticed there's been times where a lot of our masters are actually stepping forward and being like, I've done this 10 times, but I have a good idea for somebody who could do this and mm -hmm. stuff. So uh, would uh, any advice that you'd want to give somebody or is there some sort of specific quality you would like to help with or point out to other people for stepping into helping with the path? Something that you don't feel like you want to take on, but how would you mentor the next person? Offer support. I get, you know, hey, New, newbie player A over here like wants to help, but you know they might not know how to help. Cause they've not been in the game for a million years, and uh, they they don't know like, hey, is it okay for me to jump in and help with? You know, that's a lot of the newbies I see. They they just they don't know, and it's fine not to know. But like, kind of like, hey, do you do you wanna do you wanna do this? I I I'll I'll, I'll I'll help you. I'll guide you. I'll, I'll mentor you. You know, mm -hmm. just offer support. In being regent for Whimsyville, I gathered, I didn't have a ton of support on like knowing like how to run a &S tournaments and where all the judges guides were and everything. I went and dove through and pulled a whole bunch of different resources and guides online and compiled them into a binder. And when I passed that on to other people, I would pass that binder on. It had a, a blank award printouts that people could just fill in and the judging guides and like ANS sheets for entrance that they could fill out and passing on those resources and just being there and offering advice as they go along, um, as you're able to. I feel like people that want to volunteer and they're not really sure, but I can tell, like they have a certain look on their face. Like they're like, they want to come in and they're kind of observing and you just like go look over and you want to hype them like, hey, I see that you're over here and hanging out. Like, would you like to come and help me with this thing? And when I'm giving advice to those people is like, just keep being physically present in some shape or form and things like that. And um, eventually like 
people like us that are like kind of scattered and like looking around, they're like looking for like, you help me real quick. And they'll keep remembering you and find that you're also reliable and they'll will want to keep encouraging you to be reliable. Like when someone's helping me out with like figuring out fee stuff, I'm like, hey, I remember you from last time. I would love if you'd be able to help me with this. Or like, I can see your strengths here and you can keep that as a mental note for them for later. But like, I saw that you did really good here. Let's see if we can work on that with you. And I think that's a really good way to go about it. Yeah, just uh, keeping your ear to the ground, listening mm-hmm. for the people that, you know, want to want to do the things works for me. I'm terrible at reading people, so you know, and then and then pushing them, not necessarily pushing them, but giving them the support they need to push them into that role, um, build their confidence up for it. Um, you know, definitely goes a long ways in getting more more quality volunteers. Trying to remember the people that approach you when yeah. you are running things that yeah. say, "Hey, where can I help?" If you don't have anything for them right now try and remember those names, try and build those relationships, and then especially acknowledge the things that they've done in the ways that you're comfortable or that they're comfortable in receiving recognition. Yeah. So, side note, Whiskey, didn't you take uh, pictures of everyone who yeah. was helping you at Forward? that was a fun thing I was just thinking about. A fun tip I had to try to remember people that are volunteering. If I don't have my camera physically on me, even though it's usually attached to my hip, I like to have my phone on me. And I'll just take a quick picture of someone doing something really quick so I can remember for later. Like either to go and look at their orc and see like what levels they're at. Because I'm an orc stalker. I totally am. I love seeing where everybody's at and their past and stuff. So I go and check out where they're at and everything and see like where I can help remember them for future events and things later. And guide them on a good path that's very positive. So I love taking quick pictures on my phone to remember them for future stuff. The best advice I can give with that is AntGuard is already set up for it. Yeah. Have them find someone with less awards than they already have and have them help them. That will help them coach along. Just like with the belt lines, we have the head of the belt line going down. It's the exact same thing. You don't need a belt line to necessarily have that format going on, which also helps the teacher learn new things that they can do to help with too. Yeah. Let's see. So with all of you guys volunteering, did you guys have role models you looked up to? Is there any other like specific moments you saw and you're just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can see that. Uh, but yeah, just like somebody you saw that like kind of helped kick off that, that path of the flame for you. Do you want to go first, Siege? Um, give me a minute. Okay. <laughs> um, my first impression that I found very inspirational was Sindari. I loved when I first joined AmpGuard and seeing like the amount of effort that she was pulling into making us from a principality to a kingdom. And I loved seeing like how much everyone was working together to make it like such a fun community thing. And when we took a bus of like 40 plus of us down to New Mexico and go and check it out and stuff like those people that were there with that first circle of organizing and arranging that, that's what made me really want to help out with this game more. And that was a really big moment for me to really be inspired. Just watching the people who are always there, always serving, always happy, always just being approachable and drawing people in. Um, Whiskey's a wonderful example of that. (laughs) Snow's a wonderful example of that. People that I really look up to. People that I want to be more like, more outgoing. Yeah. Thank you. I'm overwhelmed. (laughs) Uh, There was, uh, still is, uh, a man named Pops out of Rising Winds. Uh, he was always helping everybody else, and he just always seemed to be right there, like, you know, the pop-up character, uh, you know, when when you need him in a video game, like, hey, you need to do this thing? And he was just always right there, and that, right, yeah, the paperclip from Microsoft, right, you know? <laughs> Clippy. <laughs> Clippy, right, you know. Yeah, but he was just always there, and always offered the right help that he, he anybody needed when they were around, and yeah, kind of like wanted to be like that so on my end it was just the basically the community that I started with they were all just pretty much everyone was trying to help everyone at the same time because we were just a small park at the time we were under the Iron Mountains so we were basically an outlying park like we currently have now where if you didn't help your community nobody else was going to at the time and that's just where I learned how to go up with that path I guess the, the first person I uh, looked up to, I had to dig back uh, Old Kingdom, I forgot, um, Sir Blackthorn, he was a funny guy, super helpful, created a, created an RP event, was always fun to hang out with and was definitely a role model there. Um, 
Whiskey, of course, will always be there. She's always helpful, and if anybody can be half as good as she is, we're being great kingdom. So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, but going, you know, this this kingdom does have a lot of great people in it, and we uh, survived the COVID, and we're bouncing back strong. And you know, there's just there is a lot of names to to name. Um, we could go on, but uh, yeah, that's that's where I'm at. Let's see. I know we kind of talked about what could happen with like if you when when you how to stave off burnout and stuff like that. But when you guys do get burnout, how do you not just kind of overcome it? But is there some things you do? Because we always I know in our kingdom we kind of encourage each other. If you are getting overwhelmed, take a step back and help help from the sidelines. But is there something you guys specifically do to, or would give advice about somebody who's in burnout and what they can do to continue serving and without getting too overwhelmed? Mm -hmm. I have friends that I tell that, hey, I'm, I'm getting kind of overwhelmed here, and they, I, I want to take a break, and uh, they will yell at me, like, scold <laughs> me, yell at me, and uh, basically tell me, no, you're not allowed to help, and then go find somebody else to do, do the service, and uh, be that person so I can take a break and actually just enjoy the game. Um. I've purposely surrounded myself with very supportive people that they can tell when I'm going to get close to a breaking point. Um, for example, I kind of broke down at Salt Wars last year as the person who lost their keys. And um, I was freaking out that I couldn't manage my keys and also take photos at the same time. And Tira Von Chaco were there immediately to help me out and help me reground myself. And having people that are there to support you in that and like letting you know when it's okay, like it's okay to take a break. And that's the most important thing when you are burnt out, you do, whether you want to or not, your body will make you take a break. When you have to rest, you'll start getting sick more. You'll start feeling like very lethargic. Like you're starting to feel like if you're more obligated to go to park than excited, that's the first step to know that you're burnt out. And that's when you need to go back and think about like, what is it that I really want to do? at park days what is it that made it fun for me and sometimes it takes months to recover from that and not come out for a while some people never come back and it's really hard to reground yourself and find out that center of what brings you that joy in the game again before you can really get your feet wet with volunteering again i didn't know you'd lost your keys too yep i totally did for a whole <laughs> 24 hours <laughs> they were in my makeup box i would go with depending on if it's mid volunteering work or like after you finish a project you feel like I can't do this again. Pivoting to a different direction mm -hmm. always helps like something completely different, same path, just completely mm -hmm. different, tends to revitalize you just at least on my end because it's something new, something that you're not used to, something you can learn something from rather, whereas the other direction you're just basically going through the motions kind of like a robot, same thing over and over and over again, which does tend to lead to burnout a lot quicker than going down different paths. Yeah. Yeah, to build off what Canthor said, I I took kind of almost a year off of service and focused on the crown path a little bit more, which has definitely helped, but I surround myself with people, like Whiskey said, that um, can tell when I'm getting burnt out and they'll help steer me in a different direction to, um, they know what I like about the game and they'll make sure that I'm doing those things so that I don't get burned out, so that I don't leave for three to four months so that um, I can grace them with my presence. <laughs> okay, I have a lot to say on this subject. <laughs> yeah. um, as someone who is currently in a major burnout stage, dealing with some mental and physical health issues, um, I've had to take a huge step back away from um, the game. Um, I want to remind everybody this is a game. This is a hobby. It's something that we do for fun. And unless that's what you want, you shouldn't let it take over your mundane life and overshadow that. That always has to come first. Taking care of yourself and self-care has to come first. Otherwise, you won't be able to participate in this thing that we all love so much. Like I've said earlier, make sure you have a great team, a great support system, a great network of people that you can trust to keep you accountable, whether that's in completing your commitments or when you are getting to that point the closer you are to these people the more they can read you and help you recognize when you're not recognizing in yourself that you need to slow down or take a break know or learn 
how to ask for help, know or learn how to delegate, um, know or learn how to break things down into smaller goals or parts so they're more attainable. Um, and then you have a stopping point before you reach what you want to reach. Know your limit before you break. It's very important to, if you have the opportunity, stop before you get to that point. Because once you break, it's so much harder to come back from. Yes, Brett? Um, I love hearing people talk about something that they accomplished or something that brought their sense of awe or sense of joy. Um, in your uh, path to your current position, uh, being seen as kind of a master, uh, volunteer force in the world kingdom, what's one moment that stood out to you? Uh, what brought you that sense of accomplishment and that sense of joy? Oh, to pick one, there's been a couple. Um, I'll, I guess I'll stick with my favorite is running kitchen now, whether they, they tell me behind my back or, or not, I don't know, but they always give me high praises when we when we run kitchen, and that's always a, a feat in itself, so I always am in awe when it's over, and the team did good, and everybody's full, and everybody's satisfied, so that's, that's always one, uh, especially the last Salt War last year, the one that I ran, uh, everything went smoothly all weekend and it seemed like everybody was happy and so I was happy and it was great. It was a super fun time. Um, something that helped me feel really accomplished um, was actually standing at court Salt Wars this year and seeing everyone just smiling and having fun like as we were doing the auction and how many people that were there and impacted. Um, that moment to me felt very, it re made everything real for me. I wasn't in this fog of like pushing through everything like it was that moment that I realized like I was able to actually help bring a positive memory for people beyond the pictures that I take that they can remember and pass on to their friends and make it so that they want to keep going to events and it was such a high it was awesome <laughs> so yeah I think for me one of the greatest I guess accomplishments and it wasn't me um it was just something that I was a part of, was Food Fight, where our kingdom got second place for like the first time ever. And the amount of money that people were able to pitch in, and I have to give a huge um, kudos to TDB because they have some amazing people who do like fundraising for their regular jobs who were able to bring in a huge amount of money for the kingdom. Um, but the fact that we were able to get second place in the whole food fight contest was just incredible because it just, there are things that we do outside of the game too to make a difference for our community. The fact that we were able to raise that much to be able to help people who have food scarcity issues um, was just huge for me. Um, it was in the role of Trash or Crap this year. Uh, for Salt Wars. Trash uh, Panda. Trash Panda. I, I decided last uh, Phoenix Bazaar to just be goofy with it because it's not a super big role. It's not memorable uh, really in any way. Like you're just taking out trash. You made it better. So why not <laughs> have fun with it and be goofy and just be stupid with it. And uh, last year I dressed up as a, uh, I got a raccoon onesie off of Amazon for 25 bucks. <laughs> and. <laughs> Uh, this year, I had everyone on my team do the same thing. Get a raccoon onesie, we bought them off Amazon, 25 bucks a pop, and uh, we'd go and pretend to be raccoons coming to take out trash and everything like that. And the, the moment, like, I, I about cried when uh, everyone, I got called up to court and everyone started chanting Trash Panda. Like, I, I have that saved on my phone, it is right there, like, at the thing. Uh, it was just so overwhelming and positive that, yeah, I make a difference. It, it comes in like a lot later than you might think. Like a, a year, maybe two years later, you'll be sitting there and you'll hear someone just telling a random new person about this event that they went to one, two years ago that you recognize that you were involved in and that what they're specifically talking about was something that you had at hand in. And that's where it comes in for me, is just hearing that it just keeps going. That's a great question, thank you. You have a question? 
What aspects of service in the game do you think people should volunteer for? Like, what do you think people like are volunteering for? And that's a good question. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a really good right. one. Right. Um, quests. Yeah. Quests. Reaving. Reaving is a very overlooked one. Yeah. It's the first thing I can think of. In smaller parts, the office. Yeah. Running for office and doing that back. That's a different path. I know, but it's volunteer work is volunteer work. I think. We are all unpaid. Yeah. Speak for yourself. I can stay in the lab. Caravanning, carpooling. I think arranging those kinds of things to help it so that more people can go and attend stuff to be part of their community is overlooked but so important because that's a way that Ray Sheen used to take us around and pick all of us kids up that couldn't really afford to go on their own and really helped us out and that left a big impression on the younger generation for people to continue for the next generation on Amgard. I think carpooling is a such an overlooked thing. <laughs> yes. This kind of that whole question kind of got me thinking about something. I was having a conversation the other day, but um, I wish that I would be able to help get involved in more demos, mm -hmm. going to conventions and stuff like that. Have you guys had any experience with those, or do you guys have any advice about those yourselves? Um, I think I've only been to like We've done a lot of one myself historically. So for demos, the easiest way to do it is first you have to find somewhere that would accept us to do a demo figure out what time that would be and then get with the monarch closest to the area. Let them know, hey, I've, I've got this, can I advertise it and you want me to set it up? Because without having both the venue and then the park's participation, it's really not going to get anywhere. That's the hardest part is to get both of them to agree to be okay with it. As far as like conventions, it's fairly easy, like most of the conventions out here are now fairly used to us because we did it for so many years in a row pre-COVID that they like, as soon as we, you mentioned hey we're doing that we do this so right if we set up like a booth they'll most likely say oh I remember you yes here's give, just give me your contact information here's my contact information and then that's when you'd have to go back again to the monarch that's closest to the area and then spread the word and that's the hardest part is just vocalizing to everybody, hey, this is happening. Well, if you vocalize it, they'll show up. Right. Mm -hmm. As long as it's not last minute, like don't oh, like, no. hey, yeah. this Friday, and it's Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Advertising and hyping prior right. to the event is super important. Yeah. So, yeah, you want to have like a lead who's going to be there for like the whole event or kind of oversee it. You need to make sure you have enough people to help be there for all of the times that we plan on being there. Um, we've done a lot of things with um, Kent yeah. Hampton. Um, from, with, he's a bell fighter. He's a bell fighter. A bell fighter. Yeah, but tired. we were doing some cross gaming, um, basically recruitment events. And we would make sure we had waivers for everyone that they would have to sign first. Um, they would get a certain amount of time in the pits. We would go over all the rules before they could participate. Um, and we would do big, ditch battles and we would have smaller sections off to the side where younger kids would be able to fight. Um, yeah, make sure there are people there and then flyers, flyers, yeah. make sure we had flyers or business cards to do the recruitment portion to try and, um, and emails so we could try and contact them and encourage them to come back. Um, it's been a huge help for recruitment um, and just kind of ingratiating ourselves within the community and especially the nerd community here in Utah is so huge. Um, we've done the YouTube convention, we've done the Renaissance fairs, the winter fairs. Um, Whimsy Dell's done um, booths at the Ogden Pride events, um, and that's brought a lot of our recent um, player base in. Um, just try and be organized, plan ahead of time what you want to do, um, don't go overboard, and just advertise ahead of time, plan ahead of time, and a big part is having people there who you know are going to be able to clearly, concisely, quickly explain the rules and keep it controlled. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, and safe for everybody. Most people's attention spans at conventions is about a minute, max. <laughs> so you want to make sure you have a very quick answer to give people to get them hooked. Mm -hmm. Kind of like how you bait people on YouTube with thumbnails. <laughs> <laughs> We're nerds and our love language is people with thumbsticks. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Things like that. Yeah. Um, we have about eight minutes. Eight minutes before the next classes start. Nice. So 
Thank you, everybody. Thank you guys for yeah, thank you. coming yeah. up this way. Everyone have a bathroom break. Thank you, service people. Thank you for service people.